introduce uh, who is here with me today and who you'll be hearing the most from. Um, I am joined by Morgan Parker, one of my coworkers here on staff. Um, she works with exam candidates and licensees um, throughout the exam and licensure process. We have Nick Anady from Toronto, Ontario. Um, he is a landscape architect um, within, licensed within the past couple of years. And so he's gonna talk to you guys about um, a lot of the things that you'll be dealing with in a professional setting as a landscape architect. And we also have Katie Brown. Um, she's a student at the University of Toronto. Um, she's an aspiring landscape architect, and she is also a special consultant to CARB. She works directly with us uh, to help reach folks like you all, the students uh, who are the future of landscape architecture. So with that, I will turn it over to Morgan. Uh, today, we are going to be going over uh, why you should get licensed, how you're going to get licensed, and then where and how you get started. To start us off, we're going to uh, under, help you understand why getting licensed is important. I'd like to introduce Nick Onady. Nick is a landscape architect that works for an internationally renowned design firm in Ontario no, that specializes in landscape architecture, urban design, and environmental planning. Uh, not built for this. The architecture exam in 2015 and has been licensed since 2016. Nick, take it away. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Um, I think the reason that, that we're starting uh, with this sort of process is CLARB often gets a lot of questions about what licensure is, why it's important, and is it necessary to work as a landscape architect? So uh, moving to the next slide. So for me, you know, the, the importance of, of being licensed is, is obviously there's, there's many different aspects to it. Um, but from a personal experience of myself being in a small firm, uh, being licensed was, was very important. Um, when I first joined Moriyama Tashima Planners, uh, back in 2009, there was two licensed landscape architects on staff. Um, and of course, often what happens in firms, there's a lot of staff changeovers and different things that happened. And because of that, it, it became very critical that, that I then became licensed as well. And that gave me an opportunity to then lead projects um, as, as the lead landscape architect. Um, and then, you know, with the success of that project, I, I became a director within the firm, uh, which of course came with significant financial and uh, incentives and company, company leadership opportunities. And now I'm responsible for uh, a section of the studio that's about eight people, and we're working on nine projects, um, or we're working on projects in, in nine countries uh, with a, a very small team. And um, currently we today have, have three licensed landscape architects on staff. So what is licensure? Um, licensure is really a formal legal recognition that um, an individual person has demonstrated sufficient knowledge, skill, and abilities to practice, and of course the main focus always being um, ensuring the health, safety, and welfare of the public. Um, so anyone who's looking to obtain licensure you will obtain that through your jurisdiction uh, and licensing board, and agent, which is basically an agency that reviews applications uh, for and issues of, of licensing. Uh, it's required to practice um, and call yourself a landscape architect in all 50 states. Um, and coming from Canada, we have uh, numerous um, provinces that also require licensure and that's uh, Ontario, British Columbia, Alberta, and of course, uh, as well, there's Puerto Rico. So some, jurisdic some jurisdictions have title acts that prohibit unlicensed individuals from calling themselves a landscape architect, but there are other sides of that where you can perform uh, certain work of a landscape architect, and then there are practice acts in some jurisdictions where you cannot practice or call yourself a landscape architect unless you are licensed. So, the bottom line of all that is that if you want to practice and do all the work that you have learned as students, uh, it is essential to become licensed. 
so we're just going to go through a few examples of, of practice and, and what you can do uh, as a licensed landscape architect. And, and CLARB describes uh, this as following. So you'll see the, the five points uh, on your screen now. So some of that is for just a few examples, investigation, selection, and allocation of land and water resources for appropriate uses, formulation of feasibility studies, which include graphic and written cr criteria, uh, to governing planning, design, and management of land and water resources. Um, you can then get into practicing uh, or preparation and review and analysis of land use master plans, subdivision plans, and preliminary design plans. Um, determining the location and siting of improvements, including buildings and other features, um, as well as accessing and environs for those improvements. And lastly, design of landforms, stormwater drainage, soil conservation, erosion control methods, site lighting, water features, irrigation, planting, pedestrian vehicular circulation, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these are necessary um, for you to be licensed uh, and call yourself a landscape architect. So why get licensed? Um, there's a lot, there's a lot of a lot, a lot of benefits for why uh, you want to become a licensed landscape architect. And we'll go through just a few of them, and of course there's more, um, but specifically professional development. So what we've often found, even when we do our hiring practices, is we're, we're always looking for licensed landscape architects. Um, that's not to say that you have to have it right away, um, but it's, it's one of those things that you want to hire someone that is on the licensure path, and it really shows a commitment to the profession and demonstrates leadership and management skills. So becoming licensed is critical to, to achieve increased responsibilities within your firm. And that's often what we're looking for is when we hire someone, we want to give them the ability to go through the exam process and start moving their way up uh, within the company. Uh, the second one is expertise. So only licensed landscape architects can stamp drawings, and obviously that's a very critical component to our work. Depending you know, on where you practice, only a licensed landscape architect can be in charge of a firm in private practice. Um, respect. So clients and licensed professionals in other fields, um, and including the public as well, uh, have a deeper respect for licensed landscape architects. And, and that's really important when you get into projects that have uh, multiple uh, different professions on a design team that you're co collaborating and coordinating with. Um, being licensed is obviously very critical to uh, deal with that sort of coordination on uh, certain types of projects. Then, of course, there's greater opportunity when you when you become a licensed landscape architect. I think that really benefits your career, um, and you become a specialist. You can establish your own business, or you can even become an independent consultant, depending on uh, your experience and what you're interested in. And as well, of course, there's financial incentives when you have a license. Of course, you can earn higher pay because now um, you are now responsible for leading projects, stamping drawings, et cetera. Uh, mentorship I, is, I think, an important uh, note here as well, that becoming a, a licensed landscape architect gives you an opportunity to mentor, uh, eventually when you get to that point, to mentor uh, employees that come into your office uh, on their path to licensure, um, which provides you some professional and, and personal enrichment and helping those people achieve licensure status. Uh, equal status, obviously, to architects and engineers. Uh, it's a professional differentiator, and it's very important. Um, so again, when you're working on projects with, with multiple consultants, you are on an equal playing field uh, with those professionals as well. Higher potential to progress to a leadership role within your firm, that's something I briefly touched on. So when you become licensed, it gives you the opportunity, of course, to start leading projects uh, and, and basically stamping drawings um, and working through uh, projects from start to finish. And of course, there's more ways to practice. You have the ability to pursue your professional interests on your own terms. So when you're licensed, then you can decide the many different routes you can take um, as a landscape architect um, and, and where that will take you. So now I believe Morgan will uh, from CARB will tell you about how to get licensed, so she'll go through a little deeper dive into the, into the licensure process. Thanks, Nick. Uh, in most jurisdictions, in order to 
qualify for licensure, candidates must meet three basic requirements. That's education, examination, and experience. Step one is meeting education, which is what you're all completing now. Every licensure board accepts an accredited degree to meet the education requirement for licensure. Step two is beginning the exam process. The exam consists of four parts and is computerized. Step three is gaining experience under the supervision of a licensed landscape architect. As you think about graduating and finding a full-time job, it's important to consider the places you're looking to work. If you plan to become licensed, you will need to experience working under the direct supervision of a licensed landscape architect. Most jurisdictions allow you to begin the exam process while you're gaining the experience required for licensure, which allows you to complete steps two and three at the same time. Step four is applying for licensure. Once you have completed steps one through three, you will need to formally apply for the license to the licensure board that you're looking to get licensed in. A little about the exam. Uh, the official name of the licensure exam is the Landscape Architect Registration Examination, or LARE. While your jurisdiction issues licenses, you'll take the exam through CLARB. The LARE is a four-part computerized exam that tests the knowledge and skills that will, you will use every day as a landscape, landscape architect to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the public. A little bit of background on how the content of the exam is determined. Every few, few years, CLARB surveys uh, landscape architects throughout North America to ensure that what is tested on the LARE accurately reflects the knowledge and skills required to practice as a licensed professional. The exam is a competency measure, a requirement for licensure, and an indicator that you are able to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the public, as I mentioned before. The exam contains four sections. Section one is project and construction administration, and this includes the project management and bidding and construction. Section two covers inventory anal and analysis. This includes site inventory and analysis of existing conditions. These first two sections are areas of knowledge uh, that you're learning about in school now, and in most jurisdictions, you can start these sections right after graduation. For section three, of the exam it contains design. This includes uh, concept development and design development. And section four covers grading, drainage, and construction documentation. This includes all aspects of the construction document phase. That was just a quick overview of what the LARE covers, but when you're ready to start the exam, CLARB's website has an exam orientation guide that covers the content of each section more in depth. It also includes more details about the entire exam process, which makes it a great source to start with and can answer a lot of your questions during the exam and licensure process. Where do you want to work when you're licensed? In most jurisdictions, you can start the exam as soon as you graduate. One of the first questions you need to answer is in what jurisdiction do you want to work as a licensed landscape architect? This is imp important to think about because you have to follow that jurisdiction's requirements to get licensed. For example, let's say you want to get licensed in Florida or any other jurisdiction that's green. Green means go. If you graduate with an accredited landscape architecture program, you can go directly to CLARB and start the exam as soon as you graduate. You don't need any experience to start the exam. You just need the accredited LA degree. Easy, right? <laughs> if you want to get license, licensed in Texas, you'll see Texas and some, some other jurisdictions are yellow. Yellow means you'll still go to CLARB as soon as you graduate, but instead of registering to take the exam right away, you'll need to talk to a CLARB representative to understand the process you need to follow. In either case, yellow or green, just remember that CLARB is here to help you through the process, and starting with CLARB is always recommended. When is the exam offered? 
All four sections are available three times a year, April, August, and December. Each exam administration is over a two-week window. We've listed the dates for the 2018 exams, as well as when registration opens and closes for these administrations as well. Just a reminder, if you're graduating in spring, uh, you'll begin the exam as early as August and registration opens in May. If you've already graduated in most jurisdictions, you can start the exam now and registration is open through March 30th for the April exams. And now Katie Brown, a student at the University of Toronto, an, an inspiring landscape architect and a consultant to CLARB, will talk to you about the resources available for preparing to take the exam. Katie? Katie, you're muted, sweetie. Sorry about that. Thanks, Morgan. Um, so CLARB offers a number of resources many of which are actually free to help candidates better understand the content, the format, and the delivery for every section of the Landscape Architect Registration Exam. These resources are not intended to teach or to be educational tools, but they are designed to, develop, or designed to help candidates develop realistic expectations for the exam experience. If you're an ASLA member, you'll find resources on the ASLA's website. If you're a, if you're a member of the Canadian Landscape Architect Licensing Groups, like the BC ASLA, the AALA or the OALA, you'll find resources on those websites as well. You might be wondering why you need to prepare or think about licensure now as a student, and here's why. Remember, in most jurisdictions, candidates can begin the exam process immediately after graduation. Research suggests candidates have greater success on sections one and two by taking closer to graduation. The longer you wait, the less likely you are to pass on your first attempt to so start as soon as you graduate. As a student, you can prepare yourself to start the exam shortly after graduation by becoming informed of the eligibility requirements in the jurisdiction where you want to work as a licensed landscape architect. As we mentioned previously, CLARB's website provides the map with green and yellow to help you understand the requirements. And you can contact CLARB at any time with questions. Since CLARB has been tracking first-time test takers, they have found that most of those completing the exam, it took 1.8 times to, attempt to pass all four sections. Most candidates are passing the exam on their first try. Data also shows that our first-time test takers tend to perform better than on repeaters. If you feel prepared, you are more likely to succeed. So in closing, Licensure is a formal legal recognition that an individual has demonstrated sufficient knowledge, skill, and abilities to practice without endangering the health, safety, or welfare of the public. To be licensed affords you equal status with other design professionals, opens up professional doors, and gives you the flexibility in choosing how you practice the discipline. The closer you take the LARE to graduation, the higher your chances of success. If you've recently graduated, in most jurisdictions you can start the exam in April. Registration is open through March 30th. Register now. CLARB is here to help you through every step of the exam and licensure process. Follow CLARB on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to learn more about licensure and beginning the exam process. CLARB staff is available Monday through Friday at nine, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time to assist you with any exam-related questions. So we can email you with exam information. We would like to show you how to start a profile. If you go to the CLARB website, we'll find a, oops, sorry, just one second. So once you're on the CLARB website, CLARB.org, you're going to go to the top right and click Create New User. Uh, you're going to want to fill in uh, your first name, your email address, and you're going to create your password and your last name, sorry. <laughs> Okay. 
then click complete. Then you'll need to enter your contact and demographic information. Title, uh, you're, uh, you're going to want to select or enter student. For those of you in Canada, uh, you'll need to opt in in order to receive emails from CLARB. Uh, once you complete all of this information, uh, just click finish and you should be able to access your profile from there. And that's it. That's how you create a profile. Great. Well, thank you, Morgan, for walking us through how to create your profile. Um, and we just wanted to see if there were any questions at this time. Well, if you think of questions after today um, and you would like to send those to CLARP, uh, feel free to connect with us on social media. You can always call us. Uh, you can always email us at info at CLARP.org. Um, we want to thank everybody for joining us today. And we want to thank our speakers for sharing some very important information about uh, getting started with the exam. Again, if you've already graduated and you are ready to start. Uh, registration is currently open uh, through March 30th um, for the April administration. We did have a question come in. Uh, where can we find the professional experience requirements? So if you were to go to the map on our website and we you registered to attend today, so we have your email address. We will send you this information. Um, but there is, there are two versions of our map on our website. One that would show you the green and yellow colors and the other that would show you how many years of experience you need in order to obtain licensure in each jurisdiction. So Mackenzie, if we send that to you, does that answer your question? And we'll send it to everybody as well. So yes, and we have a question. Could you share more on how to prepare for the exam? Um, Katie, do you want to tackle that question? Um, this is something that we, we briefly touched on um, uh, in terms of the materials that are available to you. Um, one of the best places to start is with the CLARB orientation guide, and, and that's available on the CLARB website. And that's a great place to, to learn more about the exam process and which, ex which exam sections cover what material um, and what preparation material is, is required of you to in order to be fully prepared for that section. Um, in terms of preparing for the exam, um, just some general study tips. I would suggest to give yourself, you know, ample time to prepare and um, utilize the materials that are recommended to you through the CLARP website and through um, ASLA or OALA, whatever jurisdiction you're a part of. Um, take advantage of whatever materials you can possibly find. Um, and yeah, I would say the, the, one of the biggest uh, recommendations I would say is to give yourself ample time to prepare, especially if you're a busy professional. Nick, you took, you completed the exam uh, a couple of years ago. I believe you had started in 2012. Do you have any, any tips for these folks who are thinking about getting started with the exam? Yeah, have absolutely. Um, I, I totally agree with Katie to start, start with the CLARB orientation guide. Um, you know, something that was very beneficial for, for myself and I know a lot of other people that I've talked to throughout the process is um, creating groups to study with so that you can share material with each other. Um, always beneficial to study in a group. It seems to um, help with, with some of the memorization process. Um, I think there's also a lot of great materials online and ways to connect with people as well. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of information out there, so it's just a matter of <clears throat> doing the research, starting with the guide, making sure you're, you're ticking those boxes, um, and, and most importantly, I'd say do your best to, to try and get a group together and, and so that you can study together and share material, um, and, and that's how uh, it was beneficial for myself, at least anyways. 
Thank you. And when we send this follow-up email, we'll be sure to include a direct link to this orientation guide that we're mentioning. Um, and we will also include a direct link to the page on our website um, that has these resources as well. Those are good questions. Any other questions? One of the ways that CLARB can help you is to figure out from the time that you graduate and can talk with you about where you think you want to get licensed. We can share with you um, the licensure requirements specifically for that jurisdiction. And then we also have all the contact information for that licensure or regulatory agency in that jurisdiction. So we can put you directly in touch with them and they can help answer any additional questions that you have. Because again, you'll be getting your license from that license or regulatory agency from that jurisdiction, but you'll be taking the exam with CLARB. All right, great. So, well, that's a wrap for today. Uh, we just want to thank everybody again. We hope that you have a lovely afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.